thanks, Remy. I, I think I'm quite honored to be here. This is my first full frontal, oh, and I'm actually speaking. This is quite an honor. Um, but what I'm here to talk about today is our VIP development workflow. And as the title of this talk is quite opinionated, because I think it's completely broken. But before I, I go into the depth of what I mean with this, I actually would like to start out with a flashback. And I don't have any, any pandas or cats in my talk, but I have Winamp. Because Winamp to me is like, this is the back in the good days, this is Windows XP, Winamp. Um, I was started coding back then. And this sound like of Winamp, if... It really whips the llama's ass. Winamp. This, Winamp. Oh, it it's really whips Winamp. This is, 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 is the good old days to me. And Winamp had this amazing feature that was the advanced virtualization studio that you could start, and then you had like virtualizations. And back then, then I didn't know how to code. Um, but Winamp had this amazing editor, the AVS editor, where you had a, had a bunch of effects you could combine. But what was more even cool about this is that it actually had live editing. So every time you changed a value, here I'm changing how fast the globe should rotate. It actually had this, and this made me curious about web development or de programming in general, because I could change the values. I didn't understand the math, but I could see the result of it. So I was kind of getting into this world of programming and math. And, and, and this was where I started doing programming, doing coding. I was trying to figure out the system, and that's basically what programming is to me, trying to figure out the, 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 the solutions to all these problems that we face every day. But then, then if we jump, jump back to the, our web development world, I, I really love this chart by, by, by the Chrome team. I think Adi and, and Paul Irish from Chrome has used this, this was in, in some of the presentations to describe sort of the life cycle of the web development workflow. And as you, you all know in this room, it's quite a complicated world. We have boilerplating. We, we use pre-compilers. There's authoring abstractions. We have frameworks. Then we have this workflow where we actually build stuff, then we deploy, we optimize. It's, it's a lot of different tools we use. But when I look at this chart of, of, of all the different tools we got, I think there's something missing. Because where does our editors fit into this? And some of the people that might have highlighted that there is actually one editor here, and that's WebStorm. But, but the reason why I think the WebStorm is mentioned here is because it has a Chrome integration. And to me, the editor that I use, sit and use every day, that's crucial to my workflow. So where do we put our editor into this? It's like, it is a part of the iteration workflow where we're sitting and crafting our application. And um, not necessarily debugging, but while we're crafting it. But I think we, we tend to forget our editor in this world of VIP tooling. So that's what I want to talk about today. And, and uh, if you look at today's web platform, a lot of stuff has happened to our web platform. I, it's like, what we do today that we have real-time GPU accelerated web applications that, that, that we're building in the browser. We wouldn't have imagined that we could do these things, WebRTC, all these really amazing things. We have changed the web platform to support these things, to support that our browser today is our application runtime. At least that's the way I see the browser. You can call this a web app, you can call it a website, or whatever you do, you want to call it, but but to me, what we're building is that we're building an experience, and the browser is the mediator, that is a runtime that makes this experience happen. So a lot of stuff has happened to our browser, our application runtime. But what has happened to our tooling? I find that really interesting to, to dive into. So at least when I started doing web development back in the days where I was dealing with IE5.5 and IE6, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not that old. but. Back then, then I, that it was a big black box to me. I had no clue what was going on on the inside of the browser. Um, but, but then we started to see the first generation of tooling. I know Mozilla had DOM Inspector before Web Developer Toolbar. How many of you remember the Web Developer Toolbar? How many of you are still using it? Exactly, because it's the only tool that we have for, for older versions of IE. But uh, to me, like, 
the VIP developer toolbar was the first tool I had or that we had as a community where we could dive into the, the DOM tree. We could see the applied styles. We could even change style attributes and we could change uh, attributes of our, our DOM element. The IE team back then coined the element, inspect the element that we are all doing today. But back then we were building simple, simple text documents. And we did a bit of presentation and now we finally had a way to figure out how this HTML blob was passed by, by the browser. So this gave us some insight. And if we, if we look at, at, at what the, the next thing we got is, is in our toolbox, that was, that was Firebug. I see Firebug as a second generation. Firebug, I think, is the main reason why many of us moved to Firefox as our development browser because it was a goddamn good tool and it was so much better than IE Web Developer Toolbar. It worked. Um, but if you look at the, the basic pr premises here, it's this exact same uh, assumptions. We inspect the DOM. We can see the applied style of an element. But back then, then we also got in Firebug, we got a, a way to see the cookies. Cookies was a big thing back then, so we could see our, some our basic resources. So this really helped us move forward. And if you then look at, at what we have today, Chrome DevTools, I, I think tooling again is the reason why many of us moved to Chrome as our primary, develop, primary browser, because the tooling was so much better. And Mozilla has spent a lot of time, I would say, trying to catch up with, with, the, with the development tools. And if you look at the, the development tools in Firefox, they are quite a similar, these are parity and, and functionality. But, but if you look at the same principle here, it still inspect the element, it's inspect the DOM primarily. We've gotten a lot of new tools, like great profiling tools. But what we have done is that we have just clamped all of these tools into this little pop-up. I can go full screen with it, but we have a lot of new tools here that is just slammed in to the same kind of IE inspector. And my, my point here is that I think we've hit, hit a dogma about our VIP development tooling. Why is it that VIP our, our div tools for our browsers needs to be this panel you open up where we slam in a lot of new tools. What we have done is that we just added a lot of new tabs into div tools that is essentially new tools that could be running completely outside the browser. And I, I think it's time for us to start to rethink of, is this really the development experience we want when you're using the browser as an application runtime? If you compare our, the browser as a runtime to many other frameworks, many other tools, uh, if you compare it to native iOS, Android, there's so much better tooling out there that is not clamped into the browser. But what about our workflow? So our tooling has got much better, but it's based on the same assumptions and principles. It's just a continuation. So what about our workflow? And to me, like the way I did front end with IE6 and IE55 and the way I do front end with, with Chrome hasn't really changed. I'm still sitting in my editor. I'm tapping to my browser. Now I have a bigger screen, so I can have them on the same screen. But I'm still doing a lot of reloads, and I'm still having this disconnected experience. Because to me, this is still a typical bug fixing workflow. I open my editor, I open my browser, I navigate to the right page, I open DevTools, I inspect the DOM, I make my CSS changes within DevTools, I memorize some values in my head, I go back to my editor, I look at the right CSS file, I save, I refresh, and then I repeat. Of course we have done things to help and ease this out, but this is still the reality for many web developers out there. And I think if, 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 if you apply a lean principle on this, if you try to take this into manufacturing, like some people will yell at you that you're doing this multiple times a day, because it's just plain stupid. And this is what I mean with that our web development workflow, the very workflow we're having each and every day, is completely broken, and we haven't actually really done that much to it. But what have we done to, to try to fix this, to fix this disconnected workflow? We're trying to fix this symptom with a lot of more tools. This is a, a snapshot of I have iTerm running with a tab with three terminals. I have a 
Ruby server, that's my HTTP server. Then I have a pre-compiler. Then I have guard running with a live reload server, so I can have a, some kind of a live reload experience. But, but that's just yet an, many other tools that we've added to our tool, tool set to fix what? What is it that we're trying to fix? And, and by adding all these tools, we have also added a lot of new complex workflows. If you, if you look at Live Reload, Live Reload is a brilliant piece of software. It's using a, some really cool technologies, but when you think of it, it doesn't make that much sense. We have a, 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 a browser a, a, a socket to our, our, our server, our file watcher over WebSockets that is listening for file changes that is then combined with a pre-compiler, pre that every time we change a file, it's being pre-compiled, it tells the browser that it needs to reload this file. What we then do is that we rewrite the URL with a query string to invalidate the browser cache that is basically just a hack because we don't have any standardized way of invalidating the browser cache for a specific file. And then we refresh the file, and this is what we have running on our machine when, when all we actually want to do is that we would just want the browser to tell, or the pre-compiler to tell the browser directly. But now we've made all these weird workflows around it. And also, now, now I'm so say in, in the home of, of JS bin, what we also have done is that we invented a whole new generation of great prototyping tools like JS bin, JS uh, Fiddler, uh, CodePen, that is, is, that, is, that, is, that is essentially just tools to try to smoothen out this weird disconnected workflow we have with our editor, because I would prefer that I could just sit in my editor and have the same experience that, that Remy has been building in JSBin. JSBin is a great experience because I have a live preview. I can change stuff. But essentially, I just want that with my existing tool set. I, I, I don't want to use yet another tool for this. Of course, there's the sharing part that you can be collaborative about code sharing that these tools fix. But I think this is a symptom of, of a more deeper thing. And then there's the, the, the next thing I've, uh, I'm seeing here is that DevTools becoming your editor. And now, now I know there's a few guys from Chrome down here, but I, I, I tend to call Chrome DevTools for Chrome Studio. Be, because what you have in, in Chrome Studio today, you have workspaces that is mapping of your local file system to your web server to keep that mapping in pair. Uh, you have uh, screen sharing where you can take the do screen casting from your Android phone, put it next to, to, to your developer tools. You have a lot of different functionality that, that I, I kind of feel this is more like an IDE. And, and my, my biggest problem with this is that my world as a web developer, I, I also need to target other runtimes as Firefox and IE. And I don't want to use Chrome Div tools in Chrome. And then when I need to do stuff in, in Firefox, I need to switch to another tool. I just prefer to use my editor that kind of abstract away from this runtime and browser world. So that's what I use. And this raises the biggest question for me, what does this mean? What does this mean that our browser windows are currently doing? Are they going to compete with all our tooling ecosystem? I know it's brilliant people on the DevTools team for both of Firefox and, 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 and Chrome, but what does this mean? What is Chrome DevTools or Firefox DevTools going to be? Should this replace my editor? Should I drop Sublime or Wim or whatever? I don't know. And to me, it's just, I think we need to stop up here and say our assumptions are basically wrong. We're no longer building simple text documents in an editor. We're building applications. So, and we have an application runtime. So we need to be able to tap into this runtime and have our tools integrated with this. Because my premise here is that we as developers, we live within our editor. And our editor, that could be Visual Studio, it could be a JetBrains product, it could be IntelliJ, it could be whatever editor you use. But each of us in this room have, have used and chosen our editor because of a lot of different criteria. It could be the plugin support. It could be the, the way you use it, or shortcuts, or whatever. But all of us is having an, an independent, our own choice of around our editor. And most likely, that, that's not going to change. I'm probably not going to swap Chrome DevTools with Sublime, or Firefox DevTools with Sublime. I prefer to stick to in my editor, because it's the home, this is what I've customized. And essentially, we have a disconnect 
we have a disconnect between our browser, that's our runtimes, and our editors. It's like we've built up this wall, or the wall is here because of the technical architecture of how we do things, but we haven't done anything to try to tear down this wall or make holes in it so we can actually talk. What we have done is we have invented a lot of tools around it that is not really helping with this very workflow. So what do we need to do here? I think what we need to do is we need to keep our editors being our editors. It's the most opinionated piece of software every, every single of us are using. It's not going to change. What we need to realize is that we need to integrate our IDEs, our editors, our tools with the runtimes we're running our applications in. And ultimately, what I'm wishing for here is, is a much more sane workflow. This is just an example, but like, I want to open my editor. I want to open DevTools. I want to make a change to my files in my DevTool because it's contextual. It's nearby what I see. I make a change, it's synchronized. Bam, it worked. Or I make my change in my editor, and the browser is instantly updated. That's kind of where I want us to go. And I want us to start focusing on this workflow because what we're doing every day is kind of insane. I already said this, but I think this is the key to, to, to bring the web platform forward, also in terms of make it, making it a real competitor to native that still has better tooling, because it has been invested much more in, in native tooling, profiling, all these things. But it's an integrated experience. It's easy to do. If, if you're new to front-end today, it's a quite a complex world. There are so many different tools you need to have running on your computer. I think we can, we can do much better here. So what's actually happening here? I'm not the only one with, the, with these <coughs> ideas. I'm really glad to see that. Um, but a good example of this is, uh, is Emmet Lifestyle. So Emmet Lifestyle is a plugin you, you install for Sublime. Um, you include a piece of JavaScript on your page, and then you have like a two-way socket um, between your browser and your editor. So every time you make a change with CSS, it's instantly synchronized, or it's happening real time. And if you make a change from the div tool, it's updated in your editor, which is really great. So this is the starting point. Another thing uh, I'm seeing Microsoft release this summer uh, is uh, Microsoft Browser Link, which is essentially just a, a socket from your IDE, that is Visual Studio, to your website. And you can do whatever you want over this socket. So there's some really cool integrations where Microsoft has been doing server-sided source maps. So if you change some HTML client side in the dev tool, everything is mapped correctly to the right server-side template. They've been doing some really cool things here. But I think we should stop again, because what we're doing here is that we are inventing proprietary protocols. We're inventing, uh, Microsoft is inventing their own protocols. Uh, Emmet is, is doing the same own custom messaging, messaging protocol, and I think we can do better. Because the reality is that we actually got something that is kind of doing the same today. This is our remote debugging protocols we have available in our browsers. Not that many people use them, or not, not that many people know about them. But for example, every time you open up Chrome DevTools, it's using remote debugging to talk to, uh, to, to, to Chrome. There's no in secret internal API is all over a messaging protocol that is actually available to you. But we have a problem with these protocols is that each browser has their own. So we, we, like, I find this kind of ironic because we have agreed what's running inside the different browsers. We've standardized that, but our interface to our browsers, we haven't standardized. And the objects we're sending forward and backward over these protocols, we already know what this is. These are common and standardized. But the protocol and the messaging interface and the API is not. Um, I have a question mark here on IE because I don't know that much about IE. I don't know if the, uh, what I know is in the good old days, I could sit a debugged J script with Visual Studio. I could attach to the IE process and debug my, my J script. But I don't know what protocol it's using. And I don't know if. That it has changed with the new IE 11 dev tools. I would love to know. So somebody knows, please let me know. Um, but I think we can do something about this. Because what if 
we as a community did something about trying to unify this interface we actually already got to our browser. What could this do? So I've been working on something that I call remote debug, remotedebug.org, which is an initiative to unify remote debugging across our browsers. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no, but this, this, is, this is my sort of say wet dream. I want to make this happen. And the reason why I want to make this happen and the, re and, and the way that I think we could make this happen is to try to polyfill all these differences out. So the, here, the proposal is that we introduced a layer between the browsers that is now remote debug, that our browsers is going, so our browsers are going to have a common interface and our dev tools and other tools like editors can talk over this API and protocol and talk to the different runtimes. And now you're thinking that I'm quite insane. Why invent a new protocol and all these things? I'm not. Because what I want to do is that I actually want to reuse the Chrome remote debugging protocol. And there's several reasons for it. Because first of all, it's the only remote debugging protocol that is documented. <laughs> Secondly, we already have an ecosystem of existing integrations. And the integrations I'm talking about is, for example, an editor like Adobe Brackets, or Lighttable, or there's even plugins for Sublime. We have other tools uh, that is doing benchmarking, Chrome's own uh, telemetry uh, project. There's all these things that's still already using this interface. So, so what if we could start to pull this out? And actually, I think enough talk. So I've been, I've been hacking a bit. This is still early days. Is that double? Um, so here I have Firefox. And what I have here in my console, can you see everything is good? I have a remote debug Firefox bridge. So if I start this, you'll see Firefox says, "How now there's an incoming remote debug uh, connection. Do you want to accept? Yes, of course I do. So now I have here is if a HTTP endpoint, now I just need to go out of, I can start. And what you see here is a JSON blob of the different tabs I have open in Firefox. So I have two tabs open over here. And what I, then can, what I then emulate here is a WebSocket endpoint that is emulating the Chrome remote debugging server. So, and Chrome DevTools is just a URL you can open up in Chrome. So here I want to say I want to start Chrome DevTools. I'm pointing it to my bridge and then points to the tab in Firefox. So here I have Chrome DevTools open. And I think, it, whoa, I want to get out of this presentation mode. I think it's a bit easier if I do like this. So here I have my dev tool. I can go to the console and I can say alert, hey. Yeah, and I have an alert. <laughs> so basically I can, I can send commands over here, right? And this is all over the existing remote debugging protocols. My proxy is just doing the request and doing these things. The other thing I then can do is that I thought how big a job would it be if I click elements? And what I then have here is actually the DOM tree, and I can inspect the DOM over in Firefox. Um, but, and I even got node highlighting to work, so you can see here I've highlighted something in the inner, these kind of things. And what I'm doing here is that I'm also passing different selectors. Funny enough, this was actually quite easy to do because we already standardized what CSS and our selectors is. The biggest problem by doing this was actually to figure out how the remote debugging protocol works in both Chrome and Firefox, because in Chrome, the CSS part is undocumented. In Firefox, there's no documentation at all. Um, so, so here, I can actually see the applied style. I can even see the computer properties. I can see what's inherited. And th this is all Mozilla properties that Chrome DevTools is suddenly showing, because it's just getting the data. Um, I don't have like the basic CSS editing ready yet. But what I can do is that I can actually change like properties and elements, so you can see stuff is changing over here. 
So this is the very first baby step of enabling Chrome DevTools that is a brilliant set of tools to talk to other application runtimes. And imagine like, if, we, if our mindset is that we just build dev tools, that the dev tools team from the different browser windows actually work together instead of stealing features and try to reach feature parity from each other. Imagine if we actually work together on this. It's anyway open source, right? But, but actually, one thing I also want to thought of is that what if it was possible that I could take like Adobe Brackets that already have like live editing functionality and make it talk to Firefox? What would it take? And, and actually, it doesn't take that much as long as you have like the basic interface there. So, so here I have Firefox. Here I have Adobe Brackets. I click the link. And what you saw is that this tab over here suddenly changed UL. And now you can see here, this is Adobe Brackets talking to Firefox. And it, And there's not a single line of change to brackets, because brackets just thinks it talks to Chrome. Because I'm just using the same interface. So imagine if we can, if we can do these things by enabling the same, so we can say, so they speak the same dialect of the remote debugging. If all browsers and application runtimes, if PhoneGap had this, this supported, so I could sit and inspect my PhoneGap app with the tool I, I want to use the most. It could be that I, I, I prefer Firefox DevTools over Chrome DevTools. So be it, I use that tool. Or I use my editor. I use Adobe Brackets that's already integrated with it. So I just use that. I just switch my target. Why is it that every time I need to go to another browser, another runtime, I need to switch to another, another tool? To me, it doesn't make any sense. Enough talk. <laughs> And the way I see it is like the open web follows standards. We have agreed on everything that is running within the browser. But our interface to the browser hasn't. Our tools doesn't follow any standards. And I think we need to change that. It's obvious that we need to do this, especially now when Opera is switching to Chromium. Like we, the amount of different, uh, difference in our web community is actually quite small. So now we have a unique opportunity to try to unify these things. And, and what I want you to do is like, I, I want you to get involved because this is just me with some crazy idea on, on if we can make this happen as a community. But I want to hear, hear what you think. This is a proposal on how we could do it. That there's probably many different things wrong with it. Like the, the browser is just probably going to say this is, not, this is impossible. But I, I want you to raise your voice and say, what do you want? So please, if you find this interesting, share this idea, tweet about it, go to remote debug, participate in, 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 in discussion, because I want your feedback. And I want to know if this is just me that wants this, or, or if, if it's us as a community that want better tooling and a more sane development workflow. And that's what I had to talk about today. <laughs>